we dropped yeah, nice to meet you, dude. I've been watching for like nine years. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, since we were crazy to see. No way, yeah. yeah. We've like, always watched your videos. I've always gone to places you've gone. It's, it's yeah. the same scene. So I moved like, from person. Canada in like 2013, and there's no like, there's not a lot of large mouth bass no, here. No, not so. Real. I came down here sort of watching your videos, so everything I know about large mouth bass fishing is like literally all credited. Oh man, to that's awesome. Yeah. Everything. Well, Wieners, that was quite a fun little meetup. Uh, I'm gonna try to get in the habit of doing these every now and then when I'm in town and I've got a couple hours to kill, but thank you all who showed up and came through. I, I, I posted my story, I was like, I always wanna bring like something really weird to sign or like autograph, and I signed a packet of ramen seasoning and then also a Crown Royal lamp, so. As of right now, it's the two weirdest things that I've ever signed. If you guys want to come through the Guggen HQ, it's open right now. The days will be linked down below along with the time. Uh, it's 2345 Nail Road in Crum, Texas. It's right next to Denton. Uh, so it's like North Texas. But I might honestly post a video later this week, giving you guys like a really short heads up notice to come through, say what's up, you know, shoot the sh buy some lures, and, and just say hello because this was fun. I got to meet some really awesome people today. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, get on with the rest of the video. Welcome back, wieners, to the Big Bass Factory. Things are looking amazing for the backyard pond. This has just been an absolute roller coaster of a, of a series that spanned over the past couple of years. And I, to be honest, I haven't been doing the best job of documenting, but it is spring and there's no better time to start a pond management project. Let me catch you guys up to speed if you're new to the channel or if you've kind of forgotten what's happening. So when I first purchased this property, the original owner had a ditch, a literal ditch in the front yard. And in that ditch was bluegill, crawfish, minnows. It was insane, but they had never really done anything to it. So after a few months of closing the deal on this, house and land I decided to call up an excavator to dig the pond out so that we could create a nice little ecosystem for bass bluegill and maybe crappie or anything else we wanted to stock in the near future first guy came out dug it through made it pretty deep and not as big as I wanted it called another separate company a couple months later and they dug it out and made it a little bit more level that would make sense for bass like spawning areas places for those fish to hide in colder months and overall it set up pretty nicely after they had dug it out the pond filled up it was amazing it was clean i had some largemouth that i had stocked in there we were hand feeding them it was an incredible ecosystem but due to a couple factors one of which being the dry texas heat and a small pond leak that pond dropped it became dirty and a lot of my fish died so over those past couple of months I've been busy, I've been traveling, and I really haven't taken the time to give this pond the TLC that it's needed up until now. First and foremost, we need to fix the leak in the pond. I've actually figured out where the leak is at, and I'll show you if you come along with me. So in this case, with my pond, I've got a bit of water that's actually coming up from the other side opposed to coming through on the dam. So it was kind of hard to locate, but after a couple of good rains followed by a dry spell, uh, I'm able to figure out where it's at. And you can actually see where the water is trickling down into my neighbor's pond. So I'm basically feeding my neighbor's pond with all the water that's being held currently in my backyard. It's quite unfortunate, but a couple ways we can fix this is one, we can drain the pond, which I really don't want to, um, and add a liner to it, which is expensive and ultimately not the most reliable way to fix a pond, mainly because liners aren't cheap and they can also bust pretty easily. And what a liner is, is basically just like a black tarp that you put in the bottom of the pond. It's it's not a good way to go. If you've got the money to spend on it, go ahead and do it. But, but there's a lot of variables that can happen with a liner, like it can break, you can have another leak, and then that's another problem in of itself. The other solution that I'm leaning more towards is sodium bentonite. Right, I've heard a lot of good things about it. There's been some other YouTubers uh, who have ponds themselves who have use that and it's worked for them. But overall, the pond's been great. It's crystal clear right now. It's at its highest pool. There are still some bass from previous years where my original brood stock actually spawned and they created fry and the fry are like now about that big. So there is still life in the pond, but for the most part, we're starting from scratch. And with that being said, we're going to build up from a foundation. So first things first is we're gonna grab some forage. We're gonna head to one of my favorite tackle stores that's local to here. Uh, so we might head there and grab some shiners. So that way we've already got bait in the pond before we stock it. And I think the next video, not this one, unfortunately, the next video, we're gonna try to find a supplier for some sodium bentonite so we can fix the leak in the pond. If we can fix the leak in the pond, that is gonna be a huge stress reliever on my part because that means my pond isn't going to shrink by the day. Um, so once we do that, we can worry about putting in structure, forage, and ultimately the funnest part of that is stocking bass or bluegill or anything else that uh, that belongs in this pond or that we need to create a big bass factory. My little jimmies. Okay. 
Apparently there's no one here. How y'all doing? How's, How's it going? Hey man, what's up? How you doing? Good to see you. Came to pick up some, some bait for the pond. Alright. And then also some gear too. Actually, I was going to look around and grab some wine first. Who do you guys have right now? Uh, we, we've got shiners. Okay. Yep, that, that's it for bait. Okay. There are a few there. Yeah, I was going to do yeah. some stuff for the pond. And if y'all have uh, some extra bass left over, might come later in the week to grab some, yeah. if, if there yeah. are some left. Yeah, we've got six to eight inch natives, um, but you probably want this after one time. Yeah, I'm gonna try them out, <laughs> yeah, see how they do in the pond. The ponds would be perfect for them, but for now at least get some bait in there, because there's not a whole lot, and then get the bait, get the bass, and then maybe do some bluegill as well. I'll add like one to three inch around June, but oh, God. Set for anything of size, because we got an existing pond. Right. Uh, probably okay. Okay. I might I might come back for bass later this week, uh, yeah. but I might get some bait now. That's that's alright. Yeah, I got it. You. you can put you know, as many shiners in your water. I'd probably say at least ten pounds to make a substantial difference. Yeah. But it's got no for it. And it's got some bluegill, but for the most part no for it. So yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Help you all out. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let you know the line is too. Oh yeah, please. You got it. Just make sure you set the bags in the water about 20 minutes you can get there and pull some kind of act on me. We got bait. I gotta be careful to not stick this swim bait right in one of these bags. All right, we've got the minnows stopped off at my favorite store, Pond King and Lake Pro Tackle. Everyone here is so nice. It's kind of a one-stop shop. You can buy literal largemouth and bluegill and carp here, but you can also buy some tackle. So we bought both. We bought live fish and tackle. Let's head back to the backyard pond and uh, get these Jimmy stocked. Bait has been acquired. I got some bad news though. I, I didn't pull the trigger soon enough and I was originally gonna come here to get the specific breed of largemouth bass, which is called an F1 tiger bass. It's essentially like the most badass largemouth that you can purchase publicly, you know, like on a public market. But unfortunately, they're all sold out and they're not gonna get any until fall. And the ones that they're gonna get in fall are gonna be little tiny ones. A couple days ago, they had like at least 200 that were like eight inches. It would have been perfect for the pond, but unfortunately, they don't have any. So I missed the uh, I missed the gun on that one. Regardless, they do still have some largemouth, just some regular northern strain. And then I do believe we can still pick up some blue at a later date. But first things first, I wanna get a bunch of bait. I bought 10 pounds of shiners. 10 pounds of little shiny boys. And we're gonna drop these guys in the pond, get them acclimated. We got bait. Four bags, 10 pounds total. They did pretty good on the car right here. I'm not really, I mean, here's the thing. This might be a little bit too much, but if we're gonna create a big bass factory, we have to have big ass bait. So we've got small bait, but it's a big ass amount. And these guys might even reproduce all throughout the season. Uh, as things get warmer too, my plan is to potentially stock tilapia. I was recommended tilapia mainly because they won't last year round and they're amazing forage. And they also will clean up the pond. The pond really is pretty clean for the most part, but uh, having a couple of tilapia in the pond might be good, but we just need to wait for it to get a little bit warmer. It's actually really cold today. I can't imagine putting tilapia in the pond. They'd probably die like overnight. All right, 15 minutes until we can open up these bags and officially stock hundreds of shiners. We gotta start from the foundation up. We can't just stock bass. There not be any bait. I know I mentioned in the beginning of this video, but just look how clean this pond is. This is crystal clear, like eight foot visibility. Like even for Texas, this is insanely clean. And I also just spooked a little largemouth from I think it was last year's spawn when I originally had big bass in here. They reproduced and they had offspring and now the offspring is about, about that big. So we technically already have bass in here. And originally I was gonna drain the pond to put bentonite down to seal some of those cracks, but there's already a pretty established population of fish in here. And I, you know, I don't wanna necessarily get rid of those fish just in vain for you know, fixing some of the patches because we can actually put the bentonite in the pond when there's water. It's not as effective but I'm like 99% sure if we litter one section of the pond where I think the leak is at, we should be able to fix it. But for now, let's let these minnows soak, let them get nice and warmed up with this water temp. I imagine the water's pretty cold still. Oh yeah, probably like low 60s, low 60s, mid 60s. Oh, almost had it. Come here, buddy. God, those little ones are always hard to catch. There we go. Check this out. 
Caleb's got a, oh, there's the timer. Hang on, I got a frog in my hand and the timer's going off. Oh, there's the bag. <laughs> there's a lot going on right now. Shut up! Anyway, I mentioned earlier in today's video that uh, a lot of wildlife has been using the pond since, uh, since it's gotten full. We've had geese that have come in, ducks. I actually saw a wood duck land the other day, which is pretty cool. One other piece of wildlife that is using this pond right now are these little tiny frogs. Let's see if I can get a shot of him without him jumping out of my hands. Ooh, look at that little frog. He's just a wee little dude. I'm not sure what kind of frog this is. He might be, is he a spring peeper? Oh, there he goes. He's got another buddy right here. I just saw another one. Oh no, that's not good. Damn it. He was just right there. It's gonna hit that bank. Let's release these jimmies. Our new forage. They should school up in here and thrive in this little pond. I've put shiners and uh, shad in my pond in years previous, but never this many. This is a lot. Be free, at least for now, until your bass bait. Oh, look at them all. That's so cool. Look at they're all schooling up. Dude, that's so sick. That's crazy. They got that pack mentality. All right, let's open up the next one. Wow, that is a lot of bait, dude. That is a lot of bait. Look at them all. They're all getting stuck in the back of this pocket. They find each other. Yeah, they do. That's cool. I think we could even get more, honestly. This pond, may it may not look big, but it's very deep. The deepest point in this pond is like eight foot, so. Let's look at them all. That's crazy. They're all schooling up. Look at that. Wow. Oh my gosh, these guys are going to get whacked when we get some big fish in here. Third bag going in, fourth bag drifting to the other side of the lake, so. I gotta go grab those guys. Stock them in the deep water. Oh, farewell, little jimmies. <laughs> that is dope. Gosh, it's just cool to see them swim. Oh yeah, we could definitely have done like, I think we could probably put like 30 pounds, if not more, probably like 50 pounds of shiners in here and it would be perfect. Last bag. These guys might get eaten on sight. As I mentioned earlier, there is bass in here. They're not very big, but they're big enough to eat and crash on a school of shiners. So dropping these guys in the deep water might be a good idea to get some of the established bass in here to eat. They're probably so stoked. They haven't seen the school of shiners in many, many moons. That's so cool, dude. I love how clear the water is too. We can literally watch these fish dip down into uh, the no-go zone for shiners, man. They're, they are done. Oh, we got one little lonesome survivor here. Get in there, bud. Farewell. Enjoy your lives while it lasts. So, here's the deal. I feel like I've said this this whole, whole video. Here's the deal. Here's what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen next? Here's the deal. Before we put sodium bentonite in the pond, to reiterate, that's what's gonna help seal the pond. Before we do that, I, I need to set up a, a bit of a system to see how much my water is dropping. Because if I put the... The, the sodium bentonite, the bentonite in the pond, um, it may not work fully. I may may miss a spot or may have to relapse and do a do another dusting of, I don't know what you call it, dusting? Dusting of sodium bentonite? Yeah, sure. Caleb's on his head. Uh, so in order to track to see if I'm still dropping water, if, my, if I'm still losing water in the pond, is if I put a ruler in the pond, that way I can measure how much the water is dropping daily because it is dropping a certain amount daily. I don't know how much. If I had to guess, probably an inch a day. If that, maybe a little less or a little bit more. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna craft a little um, measuring tape here. Right. Normally, what you want to do is put this right at the overflow point of a pond. I don't have that in mind because it's not that big. It's something you normally do for like a larger, like five, six acre pond. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the deeper edge of the dam side. And uh, every day, I'm gonna go out there and just kind of measure how much we're dropping. And then once we put the bent night in there, hopefully that dropping will have slowed down or completely stopped depending on its effectiveness. So I'm gonna put this on a piece of two by four and uh, well, I'm gonna design a little ruler. A little arts and crafts project here. It's janky, but it works. Let's set her in the pond. 
Here we go. This is pretty much the deepest point in the pond that I can reach to at least right now. It doesn't need to be all the way out in the middle. I just need to kind of put it in an area where I can gauge that water level each day. I know that may not make any sense, but I just need like a ruler system. Normally you'd want it to be like, so you can tell how many feet it's actually dropping, but right at the bottom of that is one foot. And then at the top of the water level right there is almost two and a half feet. So we'll see. I'm gonna take a picture of this right now. We'll come back tomorrow, see how much is dropped. And then once we spread and dust the pond with some bentonite, hopefully we don't see any change in the water level unless it's coming up after a nice rain. Well, I'm now on dad duty. A baby just spawned in my arms, but this is fine because the video is complete and over. Step one, which wasn't a huge leap or a huge step in today's video, but it was a step in the right direction. We got some uh, forage or at least part of the forage stocked in the pond. We got the ruler measured so we can measure the dropping water. <laughs> you cold? What's going on? And uh, the other thing too I failed to mention is one of the reasons why I'm excited about this pond too is before I started this, I didn't know I was gonna have a daughter or a kid for that matter. And what's cool about this little backyard pond is it and hopefully when it's complete and it's got fish in here, this will be an opportunity and a place for Milo to come down and wet a line and kind of enjoy the outdoors just right in her, in her uh, front yard which is she always loves i'll sometimes in the morning take a take my cup of coffee grab milo and we'll just walk around the pond and we'll look at the frogs and turtles no fish of course but everything else that's living around here and uh, she loves it she's definitely an outdoors girl but right now she's getting a little sleepy so we're gonna wrap up this outro thank you guys for watching be sure to like the video drop a comment let us know what you want to see next in the pond restoration like i said this is going to be our main priority i've been doing a ton of bass fishing and i want to kind of i don't know i kind of want to put some tlc in the backyard big bass factory and make it whole again but i appreciate the view we'll catch you next time as always as always what keep fishing never <laughs> never stop see y'all